hell's going on? <laughs> it's time to talk about Girl From Nowhere season two. Oh my goodness. Well, off the top of my head, I have no idea what's happening because there is Nano, there is Yuri, and then the last episode, there is another person who is also a psychopath. So I don't know, the world has gone totally chaotic and I have no idea what to make of it. So in this season, uh, things, you know, followed the same formula as they did in the first season where Nano is trying to reveal the hypocrisies and the crimes of any school that she visits. Well, what's interesting is that I started to feel that every episode was getting super repetitive and like it was the same formula over and over again. And then they introduced Yuri who happens to be, you know, part of Nano, so to speak, or like of the same power that Nano brought into the world. And so she's kind of like her disciple, it's, her apprentice, or yeah. her own creation. It's weird because I don't think that Yuri has the same kind of power as Nano, but I also think with the presence of Yuri, mm -hmm. Nano's powers decrease and get a little bit more weaker mm -hmm. uh, as we see her wounds stop healing. And eventually we get towards the end where apparently one of her, at least one of her bodies, uh, finally uh, bites the dust. It seems like she has multiple like bodies or multiple copies of herself. So I don't know, like the brand of justice, Nano's brand of justice, like you were saying while we were watching this is a little bit more nuanced. She reveals hypocrisy and teaches a lesson, but she can be brutal in a way, but Yuri is complete anarchy yes. and chaos where she just wants everybody to die. And I originally said this show is kind of like Emily Van Camp's Revenge, but mm -hmm. I think it's more along the lines of Black Mirror in the sense that each episode is kind of like its own isolated story, but I think mm -hmm. it's still in universe because Nano is just visiting all different types of schools and it really makes you wonder do I really want to study uh, abroad <laughs> at, in Thailand in anytime Thailand? soon? Well as long as Nano is not in that school and as long as you're not doing anything devious. But if Nano <laughs> but if Nano's not at that school then she won't expose yeah, the, the well, crime rings that are yeah, happening. Yeah, that's true. I mean, what do you think? Like, I think Nano like has this kind of morality to her brand of justice, right? Where yes. Yuri is just kind of like, well, whatever gets the job done, let's just do it. You know, I just thought of this. I think Nano has a method to her madness mm. and Yuri has a madness to her method. Wow, okay, wow, that's interesting. They're complete contrasts and opposite yes. each other, right? And so tell me what you think. I think Nano represents a brand of justice that is very calculated, very measured, mm -hmm. and uh, her approach is very nuanced, like Nuano, mm -hmm. like not like Nano. <laughs> <laughs> but Yuri, as you said, is an anarchist. She's about chaos. Mm -hmm. She's an agent of chaos. And yeah. so her approach to getting justice is basically let people go crazy and kill themselves. Yeah, at the end of the day, they all reveal their own hypocrisy, right? Yes. Like there's a lesson to be learned, but she does not like the nuanced system that Nano obviously She's is a little impatient. bit more. Yeah. Yeah, more more methodical oh but you know what like there's it gets the job done though like for yuri in yuri's case like if i could defend her just a little bit like she gets straight to the point faster than anything else yeah and nano is more the lesson oriented person mm -hmm. whereas yuri is the results oriented person i mean don't get me wrong we're all pulling for nano here because we're in love with her character mm -hmm. ever since season one and now season two it seems like they're setting it up for season three and so i'm super excited but you let us know in the comment section below are you team nano or team yuri I'm Team Nano. I'm hoping that if they renew it for season three, she comes back in full force and mm -hmm. like gets her own revenge mm -hmm. on the revenge gods that, you know, enabled her and Yuri and whoever replaced her, Junko, in that last episode because, you know, she made her drink yeah. her blood and I don't think maybe it's gave her I don't think she replaced powers. her. Like, I don't think she replaced her. Like, I think... There's some kind of rules, like unwritten rules in the in the world of karmic justice, I guess, right? And the no has to be selective, but then it seems like Yuri is like, well, I'm just gonna keep passing it down the line and like whoever can do this job with me, then I'm just gonna give it to them. And yeah, she, she has no rules whatsoever. She basically says you're no longer needed and lets mm. Junko drink her blood that yeah. supposedly does something. Yeah, I hope the next season has to do with Nano regaining some kind of power, like regaining, like as you said, like she has to have some way to regain all of her powers yes. because that last episode she wasn't healing. And throughout the last episode, we find out that she is no longer immortal. Uh, which is something that I didn't know. I, don't think I, that's I thought true. it was. I always thought that it was just something kind of supernatural with her. But mm -hmm. Yuri tells her when her neck wound isn't healing that you are now mortal. Oh, that I don't know. Maybe it's because she has like multiple copies of herself. That uh, is it a finite amount like, of copies? She has like three or four more lives left, 
and she was just immortal before. I, I have That's no the question idea. we yeah, have, right? Is it a finite number of lives or copies? Mm. Um, does she continue to make copies of herself? Mm. Because like, you know, even if we go off of the number of copies she had in season two, in season one, she popped up like five times when they were trying to kill her in the in that field. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, what was your episode in this season? Uh, I think my episode was the one with Yuri, actually. The really? Episode five, I believe, mm. where she first met Yuri and she decided to bring her back and like, yeah. bring her into the fold. I think it was an interesting kind of twist, uh, especially when I was starting to feel like it was becoming very uh, repetitive and Formulaic, predictable. Yeah. Yeah. And so to add her to the twist and kind of put like two approaches mm. to her brand of justice and give her a foil, basically, yeah. I thought it was a great way to, you know, shake things up. You know, I'm still thinking about episode one where Nanai gets uh, the just desserts that he, he that was coming his way, where he was impregnating girl after girl after girl oh in the high school. Gosh, yes. And then he became pregnant, and that was just brutal of how that lesson was taught. So I'm still thinking about that, but I also really, really loved the last episode. Well, that is it for us, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of season two. Are you team Yuri, team Nano, team Junko? Or are you looking forward to season three? Let us know in the comments. Leave us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, tap that bell notification so you know when we post new videos. And once again, we'll see you next time.